All right. Hey, Matt, thanks for coming on. Uh, everybody, Matt is the, uh, the author and uh, the everything of leadscalling.com, which we've pointed out a few times. Uh, Matt Emery, what started this whole thing? Well, it all started with Lead Scalling's perpetual motion holder that I built as a student at Purdue. Mind you, I wasn't a double E student or in physics or anything like that. It was a history of science and technology class. Um, the challenge was to build a perpetual motion device, and I recalled reading about this device in Lee Scullman's writings, and um, um, built the device, and it worked, as Lee Scullman said. Um, unfortunately, they didn't feel it was actually perpetual motion, uh, but um, uh, at, at some point, there was an article written about it on the uh, premier magnetic site, KeelyNet.com, which... Um, I think prompted some interest from, from the higher ups of Purdue. In fact, I got a letter from the president of Purdue saying, hey, let's test this device and see what's really going on. Wow. So, uh, so, so one thing led to another, and uh, you've, you've spent, uh, how long have you spent uh, working on Ed Leeds Sconan's writings and uh, his experiments? It's, it's coming up on about a decade, 10 years now. Um, I think it was back in 02 when I built the device. And uh, it's everything's just kind of escalated from there. Uh, what I thought made for a good first uh, video to introduce uh, those uh, of our viewers who didn't know you or your website, uh, or the fact that you've got a book coming up soon, uh, was the fact that you uh, said that Ed Leeds Sconan, uh could teach us a little something about the sun, and maybe even about harp. <laughs> you know. You know yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, we're here talking 70, 80 years ago. Um, Leeds Conan said quite a few things that, that are really just now being realized. And one of the things I, I found extremely interesting was what he said about the ionosphere and radio waves. Um, not only was he doing experiments with radium and things like that and studying alpha, beta, and gamma rays, and um, he elaborates a little bit on, on his findings. Um, but as far as potentially anticipating something like Harp, um, he, he's got a couple different places where he discusses the, the ionosphere specifically. And uh, he says that, uh, well, he's talking about how a radio works. And he says that uh, radio waves are not waves but they are the, the north and south pole individual magnets which come out of the transformer secondary windings. Um, he says one half goes up into the air and the other half into the ground in increasing and decreasing numbers. And then he says the numbers are regulated by transmit tube and the speed is regulated by voltage. And it's this increasing and decreasing numbers that cause the receiver's antenna to generate a tiny current and then, of course, the ampli ampli amplification process starts to re reproduce the original broadcast. Uh, that's a mouthful. But he basically says that the magnets are not running up to the ionosphere and down again, but they're running horizontally until they lost. And this is where it kind of seems like in every little sentence you've got to kind of pick apart just to see what he's getting at. And there's lots of little semi-prophetic statements all throughout his writings, but this is the one where I, I think he kind of an is anticipating something like hard, but he says the those magnets which go up to the ionosphere never come back as radio to the receiver. They only cause the ionosphere's magnets to come back to the Earth as radar waves. And then radar? He, so, like, yeah. the the harp rings that we see on, on you know, on, on the radar screen. It, it, that, that same kind of wave that you're talking about, right? Exactly. In his prior statement, he says radio waves don't go up to the ionosphere. They travel horizontally until they basically just fade out um, when they're up in the air. Uh, so when he, after he makes that statement, he says, hey, these, the radio waves that go up to the ionosphere, and, you know, so there's, there's a difference there. If, if they're traveling horizontally, why would they go up to the ionosphere and back again? So, um, to me, it, it sounds more like harp than it does a radio broadcast. As as difficult as his writing style is, and uh, from what uh, from what I've read of what you sent me, and thank you for that. Uh, 
it's pretty it's pretty dense but what might be even more impressive is uh what he built in florida um i yeah. I, I have a feeling most of the listeners here know about uh, rock gate uh coral castle i personally think he used you know pulleys levers and fulcrums for some of the smaller t- stones his his hoist, his chains, and things like that were rated at about 10 ton. 10 ton is really kind of on the smaller end of the stones that are there at Rock Gate or Cora Castle. Yeah, isn't there one that's so, about 30 tons? Yeah, there's a couple that are around 30 tons, maybe even more. The, the telescope is at about 30 tons. It's actually reported to be 16 feet into the ground, and then it's about 30 uh, some feet high. Wow. And it's humongous his crescent of the east um as some folks call it is 30 tons and when you stand next to this thing it's it's unfathomable how how this guy was able to erect this thing or even even quarry it let alone put it in place it's no i mean that no one has ever been able to accomplish anything similar that's that particular stone is, is bigger than any stone at stone Age. wow so it's it's just gigantic, and um, and to do that, do that at night, which there's a lot of evidence in his writings that that indicate certain reasons why he may have worked at night. Um, one has, if we go back to talking about radio, is that during the day he says, since the radio waves are traveling horizontally, the um, sunlight affects them, and that's why you get better reception at night with radio waves than you do during the day because they're in fact he said at night you only get rays from other suns um cosmic rays and those kinds of things well and you know you you know that's another thing you know every time uh every time there is a solar flare above uh or an an m class or above uh there's technically some kind of radio blackout uh announced by NOAA. um so uh, that totally that makes absolute total sense. I uh, I have one last question for you for you Matt uh, yeah. for this round and that's uh, if people were going to check out your website and really start to get into this uh, some real curious minds uh, what experiment would you suggest people try first? Um, you know there's a there's a lot of stuff on the web now about gridline theory you know, from ancient aliens to and grid line theory and ley lines it's, it's, it's really fascinating the possibility that these that the earth's encompassed with this geometric um, grid line system and I can tell you from Leeds Coleman's experiments he has a few that that basically prove it and he says that and it's really easy to make you just make a a, a three foot compass or a hanging compass and it's easy enough to do the instructions are in his writings which are available on my website um you make a compass, but hit at his location, um, he said that all of his magnets don't point toward geographic north and they don't port, point towards magnetic north. Um, they're guided by the individual magnetic streams that are passing by. So that, I think that lends a lot of credence to grid line theory, and it's, it's really easy to prove at your own location if you hang up a compass, um, as instructed by Leeds Colin which you can make out of welding rod or, or really just about any ferrite material, um, you can see what direction things are, are heading at your current location. So um, that that's one experience. Incredible. But the, of the ultimate, the best thing to build is the perpetual motion holder. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's a flux capacitor. It's so cool. It, it's a room temperature superconductor. It, uh, it demonstrates the atom, the earth, a transformer, a generator, a holder of perpetual motion. It's like a mini, when you break the orbit of the perpetual motion holder, it's like a, it's like splitting the atom. You get a huge electromagnetic pulse when you break that orbit. Um, it's, it's extremely cool. Wow. And uh, that's got to be it, the most efficient way to make electricity is based on the perpetual motion holder. And uh, it's easy enough to make. Um, at least a smaller scale. It's hard to get soft iron, and, and you really can't bend inch and a half steel rod very easily. But but feel free to contact me for any advice on on smaller versions or how you can make any uh, uh, less expensive versions and how to wind the coils and those kinds of things. But 
but there's I'll tell you there's, there's any number of extremely simple cool experiments to show that um, Leeds Coleman was on the right track and really I, I can't find any flaws in anything he's ever said or any of his, his experiments so um, wow. but those two I think are, are probably the some of the, the neater ones that folks can do excellent Matt thank you so much we really appreciate it can you come back for us sometime sure no problem anytime awesome ladies and gentlemen Matt Emery leadsconin.com